There we go, first one of the day. Glenn Walker here with Midwest Outdoors. We're out here just doing some, uh, you know, largemouth bass fishing, uh, you know, fishing some, you know, various things. You got lily pad shallow, milfoil, coontail, and then we have some offshore structure we're gonna target, and obviously plenty of boat docks. So yeah, you know, not huge, but first one of the day, just absolutely engulfed that all-terrain AT jig, just hammered it. So we'll get this one back and keep going after him. Anytime you can throw up in the lily pads and you get a bite like that and get them in the boat, that's just bonus. I mean, this chunky, you know, three and a half, four pound fish, you know, just engulf that snake proof Bobby's for, for perfect frog. I mean, and I was probably, you know, 25, 30 yards back in that thick stuff. And, you know, when you hook it, you gotta get that fish out. First, you need to be able to set the hook and get that fish hooked. Uh, and then you gotta get them back in the boat. Um, so yeah, I'll talk a little bit more about here. Let's get this good one back and see if we can get another one. These lily pads, you know, what I'm looking for is lily pads that have a little bit deeper water on it uh, and some other cover associated with it. So back in this corner here, these lily pads are kind of nestled up to some laydowns. Big thing when you're fishing topwater frogs is you gotta start with your line. I use 65 pound Seaguar Smackdown braid and with that braided line, you get that instant hook set. So when that fish struck my frog, you know, I'm wait for it, set the hook. That braided line has no stretch. So you get a solid hook set. And then that braided line acts as kind of like a razor cutting through those weeds as I'm bringing that, frog, that bass in. Um, and you know, that's the key when you're top water frog fishing. Another nice frogfish, just eating that. Bobby's perfect. And if you saw in that, you know, when I was fighting that fish, it got hung up in those pad stems a couple times. And when you're using that 65 pound Smackdown braid, you're just able to, you know, keep some nice pressure on the frog, you know, keep that fish hooked and get him out of the cover. So, you know, as you noticed here, as soon as I got that bite, I quick went down and double tapped my tail and foot switch. That way, you know, my boat will stay in, stay in position because, you know, where I just caught this fish, there could be a nice group of these that I want to make repetitive casts to. So, you know, when you're fishing shallow water cover, you don't want to blow by that cover. So as soon as you hook up or if you have a strike, you know, put your talons down, you know, stay in that spot and that way you can get a couple more of these. So when I'm topwater frog fishing, you know, there's a ton of color of frogs on the market, but I keep it pretty basic. Uh, I have a lure lock, just utility box here, and you can kind of see I have some whites, browns, and blacks. Um, you know, to me, that in my opinion, that's pretty much what you need to cover, you know, the basis. Uh, whites, you know, if they're really feeding on bait fish or if it's a real bright sunny day. Uh, blacks, if it's dark out, real cloudy. Um, and then the browns, when it's real natural. Um, brown is kind of my go-to because it just mimics what they're feeding on, whether it's bluegills in the pads, uh, if they're feeding on, you know, actual natural frogs in the, in the, up in the shallow water cover. Um, but I just keep this, you know, LL1 lure lock utility box case stocked with them. Um, what I like about these lure lock cases is these latches are real sturdy. They're not gonna break. They lock it, you know, they keep the case closed. Um, and these cases are, are really sturdy. I mean, this, you know, I'm, you know, 100, 65 pound and I'm you know I'm putting a decent amount of weight on this box and you know not cracking so real sturdy so you know when I organize this box in the beginning of the season uh, it's gonna stay organized I'm not gonna have to replace the case it's not gonna be bowing or anything like some of the other cases on the market um, you know so it's just a real nice case that you can keep organized and you know that way during the year you can keep fishing and not have to be reorganizing your tackle so I switched up here you know Switched up, I went from fishing shallow water lily pads to cranking an offshore rock pile here. And I mean, so that's the great, you know, great thing about, you know, some of these lakes is you can, you know, go from fishing inches of water, you know, to here, you know, I'm sitting in, you know, 15 foot casting about 12. And, uh, 
yeah, you just gotta, you know, kind of rely on your gut and go with what's working. But you know, that's a nice healthy fish. You know, start just feeding on some rocks here. But you know, I just, you know, use my Humminbird Solix units to side image this point to find these little isolated rock piles. And I, you know, relied on my units, got lined up on them, and then you know, I'm just making casts with a crankbait that dives. And yeah, so we get this one back in. Stand. Not a bad one to end the day on. Anytime you can get out there and throw a topwater frog for bass in the lily pads is a great day of fishing. So for more information on Lure Lock, check them out at LureLock.com and stay tuned for more Midwest Outdoors.